dream One swimming up, one swimming downstream The Pisces life, the Pisces life Two fish living in a dream One swimming up, one swimming downstream The Pisces life, the Pisces life The Pisces life, the Pisces life The Pisces life, the Pisces life Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to yet another edition of The Pisces Life. It isn't just any edition. We have a very special guest with us today, Miss Africa Miranda. I tell you, I just like saying your name, okay? Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> so we wanted to introduce her to you, um, to our audience for the very first time as a part of our special programming for Pisces season. As you know, we turn up the Pisces season, and you never know who's going to stop by. So you may remember her the last time we saw her in the spotlight. She was in our living rooms and, you know, the late night hour off of Bravo TV, uh, New Atlanta. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) A lot has happened since we last caught up with you. So give us a good hello and take us into the life of Africa Miranda. Well, hello. I'm I'm like, that's such a grand introduction. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Um, But I guess life after, you know, the new Atlanta, which was an interesting experience to say the least. Um, um, Immediately after the the, the show wrapped, I actually um, became the first ever brand ambassador for Cream of Nature. So I spent, you know, a year representing the company, you know, as the face of the company. Yeah, and they're in the, you know, in their ad campaigns, also in, in appearances and social media initiatives and those sort of things. So it was a great, great year. And they were the first uh, brand that I, you know, that I actually booked my very first, like, you know, large international modeling campaign back in maybe nice. seven. So to be able mm-hmm. to kind of have a full circle moment with them at this, you know, this next level of my career was wonderful. So I, I was able to do that. Uh, I transitioned and moved, left Atlanta, came back to New York. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, wow. So you're in NYC. Yeah. I'm in NYC. And I've been back in New York for about a year now. It's, it's funny. I still find myself in Atlanta a lot for work, but I'm back mm-hmm. uh, based in New York. Um, I this past year, I shot my first television star in and shot my uh, first tele- scripted television pilot, Make Time for oh Love. Oh, my God. Yeah, Congratulations. That, thank you. And that actually happened in Atlanta. So it was kind of funny. I was like, I'm living in New York now, but I'm back in Atlanta, you know, for work. So, um, <laughs> And it's a, a scripted dramedy, and it's being uh, shot to networks as we speak. So, you know, if all, all goes well, the project gets picked up. Uh, so I'm like, what else is going on? Um, I fell into, well, we have, fell into live streaming, so many things. So we can talk about all of that. Absolutely. Now, one question I want to know, what happened with the lipstick? Are you guys still performing? It's so funny. The lipstick junkies, we are still lipstick junkie sisters, even though we are all in, you know, separate places. Uh, Megan mm-hmm. has recently relocated to the Northwest, so she's right outside of Seattle. Um, okay. Monica is touring with Fonty Gold, and she's actually in New York right now, so we've been able to catch up. So we're still there in spirit, but it's one of those things where when you have people that are creative, you're usually off being creative. So we're still trying to find a way to bring it back together and do, Mm -hmm. you know, do something together. But the junkies are working, just not collectively, but we are still working in the creative space. So everybody's doing it very well. Mm -hmm. I love that. That was so sweet to watch you guys come together and finally get that big performance at the end. Oh, my God. We had such a good time doing that. Such and such a good time. So talented. You know, people say the triple threat. I mean, quadruple threat here. Now you're working <laughs> on other projects, you know. So it's great to hear. So you've got a question, and then I'll jump back in. Mm-hmm. Certainly. So um, we, we all consider ourselves to be part of the uh, the Black Girl Magic movement mm-hmm. here. Absolutely. And, and um, we all had dreams and aspirations that we, we set before ourselves when we were little girls. So... When you were a little girl, what did you want to be when you grew up, and how close or far away are you from that now? <laughs> I'm like, I just wanted to be Whitney Houston. I think I didn't, I didn't believe that. I was like, that's all I wanted to be. I was like, well, I just want to wear, have great hair, wear pretty outfits, and uh, go sing. <laughs> so, <laughs> needless to say, as I got older, I adjusted that somewhat. Um it is funny. I mean, you have these, it, and I don't really know if I had something very specific beyond just I loved her, and I was like, that's enough. But I think mm-hmm. the great thing is that, you know, as I've gotten older and really learned a lot about the business, I've just found that there are things that I've been able to do that, honestly, I never even dreamed of. And I think that's been better because there are things that I couldn't have even imagined or my mind, mm-hmm. you know, at that age couldn't have even, you know, thought were possible. So to say that, you know, I've been able to travel, I've been able to travel all over the world performing 
ads that, you know, that have my face on them are all over the world. I've been able, you know, to impact people and, and, and have those sorts of interactions and experiences is bigger than a little girl, like, growing up in Montgomery, Alabama, could have ever thought of. Wow. So that's it. why you grew up in, in Alabama? Yes, I, I was born in Boston, but raised in Montgomery, Alabama. Oh, How wow. was that? How was that? Oh, uh, yeah, the South is, it's funny, you know, and people say, like, it's so funny, like, now the Beyonce is repping Bama in formation. Like, all of us in Alabama are like, we've been, we've been repping Bama, but I love, you know, I would love to hear that. But, you know, so to call somebody a Bama for me was never negative. I was always like, yep, I'm from Alabama. So it's, you know, growing up in the South, I think you have a different sensibility of what it means to be, you know, I, I, yes, to be African American, but also to be black. Like, it's a very, you know, it's a very different experience when you, you know, the things that people in other places read about in a book happened in the city that I grew up in. Like, you know, the the march from Selma to Montgomery. Sure. I live in Montgomery. You know, I, I saw those things daily. Rosa Parks, mm-hmm. all of that happened, you know, up the street from where I grew up. So it's, you know, you have a dis- different sense of history and I think appreciation for it because it's not an abstract. It's a very real living, breathing thing. Like, I grew up seeing Confederate flags on cars every day and on the mm-hmm. back of trucks and things like that. So. But, you know, but at the same time, I think it's you're instilled with a sense of you're you work hard and you and you can mm-hmm. see the results of it because, you know, there are, I grew up seeing my especially even in my family, people that were of color, that were business owners, landowners, my friends, family. So as much as it was an area that, you know, there was still the racial issues, of course, you absolutely saw people that look like you doing well. And it made mm-hmm. you believe that you could do well, like people went to college, people had businesses, they worked. So it was definitely inspiring in that way. Yeah, I like that very much. So, so I have another question for mm-hmm. you. Um, having had the reality experience now, and I see that you're also a part of the project Truth in Reality. Yes. I wanted to know if there were a couple of things that no one told you about doing reality TV, but you would be sure to tell somebody else. What are those couple of things? Yeah, I, I, it's funny because I do ha- I have had conversations with people post the show, you know, that have been approached about doing shows, and I just always tell them, you know, be really ready for what it means because I wasn't, I didn't really grasp how much it was going to change my life, what I'd be exposed to, and what mm-hmm. I was really signing up for. You know, I work in the business, but, you know, being an actress on a television show is very different from, you know, being a cast member on a reality show. It's different expectations. Okay. It's a totally different experience. And, you know, it's really kind of a free-for-all, and you have to, you know, really realize that you're putting your life out there for the world to comment, to judge. You know, you're yeah. putting yourself at risk from other cast members. You know, you just, you're mm-hmm. really in a free-for-all situation, and to really make sure that it's something that you're willing to do and what you're willing to sacrifice to do it, because I really, you know, I as much as I think that I know, as much, you know, a lot about the business, I was still very naive about that process. So what, what 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 was something that caught you off guard? I mean, we're just grasping out here because we watch you guys on TV. Right. And, you know, we're not sure where the reality may be, you know, exactly. Right. So do you think your portrayal was accurate or what was it that caught you off guard? Um, I mean, as far as like how I presented myself, like, I'm okay with that because, you know, a lot of yeah. people say, oh, editing. Well, mm-hmm. they can only edit what's there. So, I mean, who and exactly. what a lot of people don't realize, and I think because I was, you know, I was a talent and an actress before this, so I understand mm-hmm. that the, cap, the camera is going to capture what's there. So what a lot of people that aren't necessarily performers, they they feel like, oh, they didn't, you know, I was edited a certain way. Well, mm-hmm. what happened, the camera catches what's there, and editors can craft the story, but they can only craft what you give. So I was mm-hmm. definitely aware of, like, if whatever I'm going to put out of myself, this is going to have to be, me because I've got to, you know, I have to like live with it when it's over. So that part of it, I was fine with that. What I wasn't fine with was the violence, you know, the, the violence and the combativeness. Like that's just not something I do in my mm-hmm. everyday life. So to have to have had experienced that and to experience on camera, like it was very traumatic. It was, and you know, it's just, it's sad because it's still like, you know, more black women being violent, being aggressive, mm-hmm. being, you know, this caricature or stereotype of ourselves. So I wasn't, mm-hmm. I, I was, I was, I wasn't happy about that. I'm never happy to see that. And, that's the part that's disheartening about all, you know, really about this part of entertainment as a whole, because we should be able to have fun and have drama and have all these things, but it's just unfortunate that that's what dictates entertainment for us now. Like the the only especially way really that we can mm-hmm. really be entertaining. Especially for this genre. Yeah, around. for this genre. Exactly. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And the follow up with that in terms of finding that space to do something about it, can you speak to your Truth and Reality um, project involvement? Well, yeah, I actually found out about it um, by going to one of their events. You know, I, I was uh-huh. in the audience. A mutual friend, um, 
I think someone had invited me to an event, um, the founder, Salai Abrams, and Natasha Gaspard, who's with Nationals for Change. It was one of their mm-hmm. very, uh, one of their events, like where they were kind of kicking off the project. And I was like, oh, let me go. You know, and it, it's an interesting <laughs> space to be in when you're there and you're hearing people talk about, you know, the show and the impact that it has on young women and our children and just our communities. And, you know, people really saying how they feel about it. But, it's, you know, I'm looking around the room and it's like, well, I'm the only person who's actually been on the show. So, you know, it was, you know, I was like, well, as the only right. person here who's actually been on the show, maybe I, you know, I have something to say about it as well. Right. But from that event, I was able to connect, you know, with the founders of the movement. And right. then I spoke on one of their panels and am definitely supporting, you know, their movement. Because, you know, my issue is that I'm not here to bash anyone that's been on the show because, I'm, you know, mm-hmm. I was on one. And it did a lot to further my career, and I'll, and I'll always be grateful for that. I'm not here to bash mm-hmm. the people that create them. I'm just my, – my part of it is just realizing that there is a negative effect that it's having on our girls, on our communities, mm-hmm. and to really ask the question of why can't we have, you know, more diversity in terms of what we show in entertainment. It's mm-hmm. like we only have – you know, it's just now we're starting to get a few more shows. There is a time when you could see so many different types of, you know, of versions of black people on television, and now for black women you have, like – how to get away with murder scandal, and then you just have every single reality show you can think of. And exactly. it's just unfortunate that that's what's being taken as, you know, that's a, that's a black woman now. All over the world, that's what people think are black women. And I know that mm-hmm. because I went to the Middle East, and they were like, look, the junkies, Africa, New Atlanta. I was like, oh, my God. You know, and that's when you realize how far this goes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Because you guys did a stint over in Dubai shortly after the show, right? You did well, what, performances what, and all of that. We did a performance because actually the girls and I were part of a corporate band, and that's how we met. So the corporate band had ah. gotten booked, um, had gotten booked for a New Year's show in Doha. And while mm-hmm. we were there, before right before we were about to go on stage, somebody in the audience was like, in "Africa?" And I was like, "What?" And they were like, "Listen, Chucky," because you know when you see them here, we were like, "Yeah." And so they, found, you know, they watched the show online, and you just realize like this has legs, like this goes all over the world. And that's yeah. why it's so important, you know, to protect how we show ourselves and the mm. stories that we tell because they don't, they're not black people like, Ameri- you know, African Americans walking around sure. over there. So that's their version of black women in America. Wow. Wow. That is so impactful. I'm so glad that you mentioned that. I think it's a perfect moment to pause and think about the imagery and the responsibility yes. almost that happens behind that and how global that responsibility yes. is. Yeah. Wow. Mm. Gave us something to think about there. <laughs> That's right. So um, one other question that I wanted to ask you, with all of us being Deltas, and, of course, one of our focus um, of foci is sisterhood. So I'm yes. wondering if you found that sisterhood amongst the reality stars or reality TV folks, um, particularly women, um, and as you're thinking about your movement or being a part of that movement, are you finding mm-hmm. the sisterhood in reality? Well, you know, it's funny. I've, you know, I've met a lot of the women from the show, but not, you know, not that many. I always, you know, I, I'm one of those people where it's like, I have my real friends, like my real friends, my real stars. So not to say that, you know, because right. a lot, that is the part of reality show that's a real, that is the most contrived part is that it's like, oh, everybody's friends. And you're really not, mm-hmm. you know, you're having to kind of get to know people on camera while pretending that you already know them very well. So that, you know, that's a little challenging. There have been some women mm-hmm. that I've met that have been, you know, very kind. And mm-hmm. some was uh, Cynthia. I've met Cynthia Bailey, and she's actually also from Alabama, so it was great to meet her. Yeah, that's right. Uh, Demetria from Demetria from um, uh, McKinley. Mm-hmm. Heels. Mm-hmm. Exactly. We we met on um, we met you know briefly. Well, not even I won't even say briefly, but we met um, at a, a set. I was shooting actually something for Cream of Nature, and she was on set, and we had always been following mm-hmm. each other on social media. So we got to meet, and we stayed you know in contact. So it's just. You know, I won't say that there's been so many. There's just been different people I met in passing, and it's and it's been really just been socially. You see people at events, but what I found really about it is that I don't know that there are a lot of women that maybe are on the shows that are willing to speak about it because mm-hmm. you know you're not you don't really want to one go against your bread and butter, and right. you know, it's, it, and it's hard to say <laughs> for some of that would be the first thing, and it would be hard to say for some of the women you know how they feel about it because you know, maybe they're still on the show and maybe they don't have negative feelings. I can't really say, you know, I just, mm-hmm. you know, for me, I did one season on the show. It was, you know, I learned a lot, but at the same time, you know, there was, I don't, you know, I don't know that I was so unhappy when the show wasn't renewed for a second season, to be very That's honest. True. Like it was definitely something that, you know, I prayed about and I was like, God, this is right for me, but mm-hmm. it just, it was very stressful and it was, you know, the violence of it, you know, like I said, all of those things, it was just, it was very challenging for me. So that's, why it was really important for me to support this movement 
and to be, you know, to, to lend my face and my name and my support to mm-hmm. helping this documentary get made and to really have this conversation because I'm very passionate about, you know, someone telling their own story because what I right. did learn from the show is that people are going to judge you based on what they see and, you know, you're watching entertainment. You're not watching, you know, necessarily someone's real life. And mm-hmm. the, there are girls and there are women and people sitting at home, you know, taking it for fact and thinking that the way to resolve conflict is violence and that, you know, or to be aggressive or that's the way you've got to get people to take you seriously. And it's really doing a number on our girls and, you know, and on our communities. And it's just it's very damaging. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very well. Very damaging. And we have to be responsible and start somewhere. Yes, we do. Talk about it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Since so you got the next question, so mm-hmm. for the next three months ahead. What are you rolling off of your calendar and where can we find you? Well, a couple things are going on for me. Um, April 11th, I will be at the Shorty Awards, which is basically almost like the Oscars for social media. I've been nominated for Periscope. Yeah, I've been nominated for Periscope of the Year. The only person of color, only woman of color. So the winner will be announced um, April 11th on a live stream of the award show. So that's the first thing that's coming. The next mm-hmm. is, um, um, so what's next? I'm speaking at the Mom 2.0 Summit, which will be in uh, California. So it's a huge mom summit for mom bloggers and all of that. That's sponsored by Dove. So I'm super excited about that. That's happening the end of yeah. April. And mm-hmm. I'm like, let's see what else is going on. I'm one of the beauty hostesses for a, I'm very passionate. And one of the things that I'm super passionate about is travel and like, especially women, black women, like traveling and seeing the world and going, you know, nice. really just kind of going out there. So I'm one of the beauty hostesses. Um, along with Parla Magazine and Eden Body Works, and there's, um, we're they're sponsoring a Travel Fly solo weekend. So it's really encouraging women that maybe don't have a travel partner if I'm going to go with them mm-hmm. to be a part of this trip. So we're going to the U.S. Virgin Islands June 9th through 13th, and Ooh. it's really just going to be a chance for women to kind of get out. You know, you have a, a you know a safe group that you, you know to kind of be there. But we'll be talking beauty and hair and fashion and travel, and um, I'll be one of the hosts for that trip. So that's June 9th through 13th. And then also this summer, I'm rolling out um, a uh, – I actually have a beauty line, Afri- um, Beauty by Africa Miranda, and I'll be rolling out oh, one nice. of the first products. So it's, um, I can't say what it is yet, but I'll be rolling out one of the first products this summer. So and it's inspired oh, by my goodness. love of travel, yeah. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, anything that you are putting on your hair, I'm like, game to try it. <laughs> I'll tell you, your, your tresses are always beautiful. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. But actually, this won't be this won't be hair. It's gonna be it's gonna be more beauty beauty focused than hair focused. Mm-hmm. You might be able to okay. use it for hair, but it's, this is more of a beauty focus. Nice. We can't wait to hear about it and, and see it in stores. Yeah, or online yes, yes. wherever we can get all it. Of so that, all of sure that. We know. <laughs> we'll do. All right. Sure. Since you got another question for her, and we're gonna I jump do. on out of here. I mm-hmm. do. So, um, personal relationships certainly influence and mm-hmm. may even guide our moves through life. So tell mm-hmm. us a certain, tell us about a certain someone, excuse me, that has inspired you to become the woman that you are today. I'm like this. I'm like, who? <laughs> well, but it's funny. I did uh, my first keynote speech for the Periscope Summit, uh, well, Summit Live in San Francisco back in January. And part of the speech, I talked about, you know, someone who's been probably my largest inspiration to date, and it's my late great-grandmother. And she mm. was, you know, a business owner, landowner, like very respected in the community. She always was very glamorous, but very kind. And she just definitely was someone to me who was like the epitome of what it meant to be a woman and be a lady, to be so powerful. And it's just, I think of her, you know, and really in every move that I make and decisions that I make and how I present myself is heavily influenced by her. So that would probably, that would without question be my largest influence. Beautiful. I have a I um, follow-up question in reference to your participation on the show. Would you do... Another reality TV show. In this business, you can never say never, but this go round, I know so much more. It would have to be a very something very specific. I'm not really interested in doing something like what I did before. It's just like, oh, a group of people. You know, it would have to be something mm-hmm. maybe com- like competition based or around. Mm. You know, or something, huh. just, or something that's just my own. You know, I don't know. It, it just it would have to be something very specific and very different, and I don't even know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> I would love to see Africa Miranda NYC. I might have to write Andy Cohen and tell him to make that happen. Well, you know what's so funny, going though? On, you know? <laughs> I, I, have, I have my own web series that I've done called Africa in the Middle, and the first installment, um, you know, really detailed my first mm-hmm. few months back in New York, and I'm actually editing the second installment. So it's something I'm going to kind of do quarterly 
not, you know, nice. not every week, but it's a web series. So if you want to see the first installment of what it was like when I first came back, um, it's Africa in the Middle, and it's on my YouTube page, which is youtube.com slash Africa Miranda. Cool. Or you can That'll see it on work. at AfricaMiranda.com. It's on my website. Well, let's go ahead on the Twitter too. Where can they find you on Twitter? <laughs> all of my social, yeah, all of my social media is Africa Miranda Periscope, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Like I just keep it simple. So if that's you type in Africa Miranda, it's me. There you go. We yeah. love it. We love it. Anything else that you would like to add that you want to share with us? Um, some parting words and thoughts as we get out of here for Pisces season. Well, you know, I love Pisces. I'm like my sister is a Pisces. I'm like another woman that I love, Diana Ross, is a Pisces. And she and my sister have the same birthday. So I'm like, my, I'm like my, my fairy godmother and my sister have the same <laughs> But it's, you know, honestly, just to, you know, w- wish everyone the best in this, you know, as you all step into this next year of your life and really just use this time to actualize your dreams. Like there's no time. And, it, and it's, it's very cliche, and I know people say it, but I just really spent the last year just really embracing what my life is now. Sometimes we get so caught up in what has happened and what we want to happen that we miss out on those moments and we're not present. And I think now that I'm kind of living in where I am right now and appreciating mm-hmm. the good things that are happening and the and, you know and the, the work that's happening, I'm just so much more fulfilled and I'm not I don't have as much anxiety. So I would just say embrace your life and where it is now. Like embrace this year, embrace this, this next year of life, and live it and enjoy it and just really be present. I love it. Embrace your life where it is now. Now, you know, exactly. We're still doing the work, but sometimes good things happen, but you're so busy trying to, like, get to that next thing. You know, you're like, oh, I did do something. You know, something has happened. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. A goal yeah. has been accomplished. Hmm. Right. <laughs> that's, that's great advice. That's great advice for, for busy people who, yes. you know, we, we wander around in creative circles within our own bodies, and sometimes yeah. we just never take stock into like, oh, I did the most amazing things I've ever done in my life last year because you're already into the next two years. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, this has been yet another special edition of the Pisces Life, and it is Pisces season. You know how we do it. We always like to bring you the best. This time, <laughs> certainly didn't disappoint. We enjoyed our conversation with our soror, who is the just reinventing herself beyond reality TV. So there's life beyond reality TV. And I love that. Embrace your life in the moment we are in right now. I think it's Thank you, ladies. Us. Absolutely. So if they're looking for us, we uh, can be found. Sis, you can tell them where we can be found at. We can be found everywhere you're listening to your favorite podcast, and we know that this is one of your favorites. Of course. Of course. Um, <laughs> you can find us on iTunes, Stitcher Radio, Listenopoly, SoundCloud, Spreaker, YouTube. We are everywhere and anywhere specifically. You can also get all of our episodes and any other creative content that we are involved in on our website, and that is thepiscislife.com. Check us out, and if you want to talk with us, you want to request us to cover you, you need an interview and your life done, Hit me and Leticia up. We will certainly be available to assist you with getting your life certainly together, thepiscislife.com. And where can they find us if they have suggestions or feedback, Leticia? Absolutely. If they have any comments or questions or feedback about this and our other shows, they can reach us at thepiscislife at gmail.com. Or you can always catch us in the Twitter streets at Pisces Podcast, and that's one word. And our definite, oh, we've got to catch up with our guest, Miss Miranda. She is Africa Miranda everywhere. Everywhere. And also AfricaMiranda.com. Love it. There you go. We're out of here, y'all. Peace. Peace.